Shireen Thor, and today you bitches are in for a treat, okay? We have one of my like favorite rebels. She's so damn cute. Her name is Cindy Andrews, and this is season two, so we're kind of starting more of an interview series. I probably bored the hell out of you guys with like being all about the monologue and a total narcissist in season one. <laughs> Um, so now we are starting to bring other people into the picture because, dear Lord, I'm bored of myself. And Cindy was like one of the people at the top of my list because she's kind of been in the Awaken the Rebel movement for years at this point and has like sort of risen to the cream of the crop as far as like literally at this point, like I go to her for rebel advice. <laughs> like, like she literally like informs me about really cool things that I've never heard of that are like like tiny house which we'll I'm sure we'll get into and talk about like she's just so of the mindset and the lifestyle of freedom and really creating a life that's fulfilling and amazing and is just committed to it and so I really wanted to share her with you because I feel like she gets the philosophy and she just kind of embodies like what this is about so I was like yeah let's freaking jam with Cindy so with no further ado Cindy thank you for being with us my friend Hey, Shireen, you are so welcome. I am thrilled to be here and chat with you, of course, always about rebel things and the non-traditional. So I am psyched to be here. So very cool. Sweet. Love it. All right, cool. So would you first educate our rebels on like how you and I came into contact? Where did we first? It was, I know I met you through Julie, right? Like when I did the freedom movement with Julie and you right. were working with Julie one-on-one -on -one, and then you came to Awaken the Rebel Live, right? Right. And you were skeptical of me, you little BS. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we met um, through phone calls and stuff through um, through the on like an online program kind of thing. Met you through Julie, and then you you guys started promoting the Awaken the Rebel Live. Right. And um, so I had when you when Julie first mentioned that you were going to be on as a guest, I had to go to your you know your website and check you out and see who you were because she had this big buildup of who you were and this great person. So I'm like, well, let me check her out. So I did do the, uh, you know, went on there and filled out the rebel. What's it? What is it? The thing that's on there? The rebel rule book. It's not there rebel anymore. Rebel rule book. Oh, it's not? No, it's not available oh. anymore. So I filled that all out and I'm like, oh, I really like this because it's like doing things non-traditional. It's doing things a different way. And so mm -hmm. that's really been my goal kind of my whole life. So like, I, I really got in my interest uh, tweaked yeah. by looking at that and then went to uh, Awaken the Rebel Live and it was, I don't know, a day or a couple days. So met you in person and then, you know, kind of went from there, so. And it's so funny, like, I was like so in love with Cindy. Like the second I like heard her voice on a call, I was like, man, this girl's like so present. Like she's got this like really, I don't know, just like, you know, there's just people who show up and then there's people who are more timid and wait. And like, I just really felt Cindy's energy. And then it's so funny, like I swear six months later, she comes awake in the Rebel Live and she's like, yeah, I feel like I finally trust you now. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? I've been like thinking we were BFFs for the last six months and somehow she was like still a skeptic. I don't know, man. I was like, maybe she just needs that in person. I don't know how that happened. I was like literally your biggest fan. And I was like, she's barely going to start trusting me now. But I was glad that something went right at Awaken the Rebel Live and you finally decided I was A-OK. -okay. Yeah, well, just take some time, you know, and you know, you hear a voice on the on the phone and, and you hear things and there's a lot of people out there pushing a lot of stuff. So it did. It was it was good to meet you in person and, and just kind of sit there in person and, and see and hear and uh, be with other other people seeking the same thing. So it yeah. just kind of cemented it in. So I totally get that where like if you are a personal development junkie or someone who's like into this kind of, you know, a typical lifestyle, like there are so many people out there selling yeah. something pitching something like freaking scamming something and so it does get you know you get like you get weary you get skeptical anyway i'm glad i passed the test and yeah. <laughs> we went on to work together in a group program for a couple of years i feel like it was at least a year and then we moved into doing one-on-one -on -one coaching together is that right yes uh-huh okay cool so cindy's the coolest y'all but cindy i kind of want to start by asking you like I don't know, how did this all start for you? How did you like start to become a person who wants a different lifestyle as opposed to, because just so you guys know, all you listening, Cindy is a physical therapist. That's kind of how she like makes her bread and butter, right? But then she, like all of us, has these crazy awesome dreams and wants to live this lifestyle of freedom and like does all, and, and just, well, you're totally going to get into your work with Dunbar and like performing and all that kind of cool stuff. <laughs> and she speaks on stage and she does other cool stuff. So like, you know, she's getting her 
soul fulfillment on, her side hustle on, and she's doing the physical therapy thing. So my point is, at what point, Cindy, did you know you didn't want to just do the normal sort of like white picket fence, you know, stable job life? Um, great question. Probably officially in a big way, it was in the past 10 years. But I think, I think through my life all along, um, you know, I've lived my life uh, by other people's uh, rules and guidelines and uh, what this is what you're supposed to do to be successful. This is what you should do. You know, you get married, you have whatever, 1.5 kids, you buy the house with the picket fence, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, here's what I need to do to be successful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I remember times in high school when I would come home and I would just cry because I didn't want to have to go back to school. I didn't want to have to do those things. It's like, I, there's got to be some different way, mm -hmm. you know, and I would always be like looking online or look, doing different things to try to figure out another way to make it happen. But, you know, of course I had to go to high school I and, mean, you know, I ended up going to college. Um, I did get a physical therapy uh, degree and license and that's how I've made my money through my life mm -hmm. but I think I've always just felt um, I mean dissatisfied I've yeah. always felt I didn't really fit into the norm I've always felt I um, you know it's always a little different than everybody else I wasn't yeah. totally satisfied with that lifestyle that I had set up and that I was supposed to do to be successful and to be happy they all happy to be happy mm -hmm. successful thrive in your life and um, but I, but that's all I had. So I yeah. kept working in that and working in that and working that. And then I got to a point in my life, I just um, was really, really dissatisfied. You know, I would work all day. I'd come home, do paperwork at night. I didn't really have a social life. Um, I was making pretty good money, but didn't really have a lot of friends, didn't do anything really for fun too much. And just, you know, one of those moments of sitting there and going, you know, is this really all there is? Is this, yeah. is this the huge, exciting fabulous life of being successful and happy that everyone talked about. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, I didn't get married. I didn't buy a home. I didn't have children. Mm -hmm. I don't have any kids. And so I didn't do some of those things that everyone said you should do to be successful. So in my mind, I considered myself a failure. Mm. I thought, well, I'm not successful. And that's why I'm not happy. And that's why I'll just have to work harder and work more often and maybe get another job on the side. And, you know, um, that whole mindset or circle that goes along that um we're well, just not working hard enough you know you need to make more money and you, then you'll be happy and you need mm. to then you'll meet the right guy and well then you'll be happy and then maybe you'll have children and then you'll be happy and mm -hmm. so i just got to this point where i was so dissatisfied and i just thought i ha there's got to be something else i got to find some other way mm. so really turned that's when i met julie and started to do some personal coaching with her and um just started doing more introspective things um i got hooked up with uh a therapist actually and uh, went to her and I'm just like why am I so unhappy you know mm -hmm. why am I still single at this point in my life why 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 all these different things yeah and just started seeking I guess more personally in my personal life yeah. uh, as to why rather than looking out at you know looking out at society um, it just wasn't there the answers yeah. weren't there so, good. so I just decided to just start my own I guess my own journey of figuring things out figuring my life out that's so cool I love that okay so I was like taking notes like a geek while you're telling your story <laughs> but like I heard some like very clear benchmarks like in high school you really felt like you felt a, a sense of like mm, this, I don't fit here I'm not really feeling it and eh, does it really have to be this way like you felt it already like so young like in high school what you're like 13 or 14 all the way to 18 like that's so young right and, and I'm highlighting that because I had the same thing. I had the same thing where in high school I was like, I don't think I'm really feeling like the sort of like moral compass and like measures by which these people measure their worth. I don't think I agree. I don't think I like it. I don't like it here. Like, I don't feel like I fit in. So it's just interesting to me that you say like you had the inclination where you were that young. Cause I'm like, maybe that's, maybe that's an indicator for us rebels. Like when we didn't feel like we fit in high school, maybe that meant something, you know? Yeah. And, and then you went on to say your next sort of, feeling of dissatisfaction was when you were in your career and you were working and you felt a lack of like social fulfillment like you weren't you know like connecting maybe the way our souls desire to connect you were just kind of working and you're like eh, I don't know if this is and you had that moment of like is this it and I find that really interesting because I had the exact same moment when I was early in my career maybe like 24 and mm -hmm. then you said you kept working and you felt like a failure so you worked even harder so you almost got yourself more in this like hamster wheel thing right and right. then you felt a deeper dissatisfaction and then and this is so good 
and this is why I'm like highlighting it right here, is like you said, I started working with Julie. And so instead of looking outward at society's rules, laws, projections, whatever they believe to be the right way to live, I started looking in and seeking. And I just, ah, oh, just love that so much because I feel like that is it. Like that is yeah. it. When we finally stop playing by other people's rules and we start to look inward, like what does your individual rebel rule book tell you that you want? And then all of a sudden your life almost begins, you know, like, so, so tell me, so what happened from that point forward? What happened? So let me just tell you one comment is that's probably the first time I ever did that. Like looked within, yeah. um, because I was always out. It was always looking outside, you know, looking to other people, asking for permission. What do you think I should do? You know, what about this? What about that? Looking at society, all that kind of stuff for my benchmarks and my goals. And it was very dissatisfying. Yeah. So it was interesting. So when I started that in my journey, it was like the, all this newness, like, what do you mean it's already within me? What do you mean I have all the answers within me? I think you said that to me probably, you know, a few hundred times, whatever. But, you know, it's like I didn't really understand what that meant. But uh, as I take further steps, you know. So what was your question? <laughs> so, yeah. So then what happened next? Like for all the listeners who are like riveted by your dirty story, girlfriend. Like <laughs> once you finally did start looking inward and you were seeking out support. Like they say that super cliche statement, which while it may be cliche, it is definitely true. Once the student is ready, the teacher appears. And so your first teacher was Julie. And then it was like me and Julie collaborating. And then it became Dunbar. Like you've been on different levels of your journey. So yes. for the people listening, what happened next? Like when you finally did decide, okay, I'm going to start looking inward and like seek out these coaches or teachers or therapists or whatever, what mm -hmm. happened? How did it go? So, so I started with Julie and I made um, this journey of trying to figure out my life, whatever that meant, what to be happy, whether to be fulfilled, fulfilled, whatever that meant, I, I made that a priority for myself. Um, I you know, started with Julie for coaching and I really liked it. Mm -hmm. Like it was personal one-on-one -on -one time. We talked about issues that I had and I mean, it was really, it was all about me. Yeah. <laughs> so it was great. I finally had someone in my life. Of course I had to pay her, but I had finally <laughs> had somebody in my life that, you know, listened and wanted and cared about me and wanted me to help me figure out my life. Yeah. And I think I've really missed that my whole life. You know, I just yeah. really missed that. So I just fed on that. That was really um, fulfilling for me. And then I met you. And so that was another person in my little, my group. So you and yeah. Julie were like the, my first two, you know, kind of, yeah, dream team. <laughs> so I uh, really liked working with you. And then I knew when I first started early on in the group, I knew I really wanted to work with you one-on-one -on -one just because I felt like we really had a, we really clicked and just, I just felt like you really understood me. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then on the show that, or like you and Julie had a, I don't know, a, a call or something. And you had Christina Dunbar on there mm -hmm. and I met her mm -hmm. and uh, I knew from that one call that I had to work with this woman. So she was like another person that had come into my life yeah. that was on my track or on my journey who I just really felt a connection to. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't everybody because there'd be other people that would come on there and I'd think, oh, okay. And I'd listen to them and it was good. Yeah. But then we, we'd go on. But okay. I knew... Um, with her so these different leaders or you know dream team people have popped in my life have come to me um, and I think I just kind of manifest that I've drawn yeah. them to my life in seeking that and seeking yeah. a um, a more like like using your intuition for things going mm -hmm. inward and uh, really wanting to um, I've always felt I've had leadership qualities I've always felt like I wanted to kind of be up front and in the limelight in some respect I didn't really know what that meant mm -hmm. but I just felt um, all those kind of things mm -hmm. um, I like to journal and I write and I get a lot of that stuff out and mm -hmm. so I just continued you know, bit by bit as I would like meet Christina Dunbar and I went to her website and checked her out and, you know, she has programs and things on and, and then, um, uh, I don't know if we want to talk about this now, but then she had a program called She Takes the Stage where she helps women find their voice and mm. become leaders and really share, you know, allow parts of their, uh, their personality or their being or their personhood that's been shut down or silenced their whole life or mm -hmm. they've never really, um, allowed parts of themselves to have a voice mm -hmm. and she helps women do that and find that and mm -hmm. boy that just really hooked me because I feel that's really was at the base of my maybe lack of satisfaction in life um, 
unhappiness, so to speak, mm-hmm. unfulfillment, because I didn't really feel like I had a voice. I didn't really feel like I stood for anything. I didn't really ever, um, you know, I mean, it's hard to believe now, but, you know, I grew up as like a wallflower. I never said much in a group. I never said anything. Um, I just never really even stood up for myself or mm-hmm. I'm not sure really, um, you know, had much self-love for myself. Mm-hmm. Never really felt, you know, I didn't really, uh, not too much for myself Mm. previously. So hooking in with her and you and Julie and all you, this group just really highlighted those things. But, um, but, uh, you know, she just said connecting with your voice is connecting with your body and who you are and, and all that. And that just really went, I just like, Oh my gosh, this is, I need to, I need to know more. So that's how that kind of got started. Well, and it's so crazy because you've done so much since then. And I will definitely get into you doing like she takes a stage with Christina Dunbar and doing your own freaking one woman show performance. Just so crazy how like amazing it is, how you take things on. So you're so impressed, but like, It's interesting to me that you say that you felt like a wallflower and like you never had a voice because I'm curious, like you were in the military, right? Yes. Okay. So like explain to me, like, cause to me, I'm like, damn, Cindy's a badass. Like she was in the military. You know what I mean? Like I'm like, dude. And like, honestly, I'm sure the people listening are even surprised you felt like a wallflower. Cause like literally your voice just projects. Like you just sound strong. You just sound like a person who's sure of herself. Yeah. You just got a strength about you. And so... I don't know. Explain that to my curious rebel mind. Like, how are you this badass biznatch in the military <laughs> kicking, like literally going to war, you know, like a fighter, a warrior energy. And then also like a quiet wallflower who maybe doesn't like have her voice. Just give me the well, well, thinking that more earlier, early on, you know, like, um, like high, ju- definitely junior high, high school, like I'm like right now I'm six, you know, I'm as an adult, I'm six one. So in junior high and high school, I was like, six foot six one in junior high and high school you know and a big kid and um it's an awkward age and all that so i i don't think i really like knew who i was you know so i'm talking high school groups that kind of thing when people are cool and just really you know finding their their place that was more the wallflower couldn't really make a decision that kind of thing and so through my life i feel that like the military i've done a lot of different things military i tried out for the olympics as a volleyball player i um yeah i've done you know all these different things and i i don't know if they were my attempt to seek um you know significance or acceptance i wanted to fit in my whole life i wanted to fit in i wanted to be loved okay Mm -hmm. so i think these different things that i've tried and stepped into are you know my attempt to kind of find my niche Mm -hmm. you know the went into the i became a physical therapist and right out of physical therapy school i um I uh, went in the military Mm -hmm. and so I was in the military three years, which was great experience. I was a physical therapist in the military and yeah, you're, you know, I I was an officer, so you're in a leadership position and I feel like I, I had a voice, but I don't know if it was like really a true authentic of who I was, you know, I mean, I was a leader as far as my person and my position and I'm a tall person. I'm a big lady and you know, I have a commanding voice. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing, but really it's really taking time. I think, to get to know who you are inside, yeah. you know, what you really want in your life, who you are, what your goals are, what, what do you want to stand for? Yeah. You know, what do you want to have a voice about? So, yeah, so, um, true. so I think it's, it's really, you know, transpired over the years. Mm-hmm. So I was a leader in this position through early on, but not until later in life did I really like figure out like what I really want. In yeah. life, you know, and I've done different things to figure that out. So that's a great point. So, yeah. Because you, it's, it's exactly true. Like, you can be in a leadership position. You can have strength. But until you've done sort of the inner seeking and, and you know, the Socrates, like, know thyself, you know? Like, right. until you've done that kind of philosophical, like, you know, Henry David Thoreau, go into the woods, into a quiet place, and, and really examine your life type stuff. Yeah, it does feel, it could feel unfulfilling. It could feel still lost, you know, where you're like, but I'm not even sure I'm on my path. Like, right. I may have done a path that was a leadership <laughs> path or a badass path, and maybe it looked like it fit to everybody else, and maybe I tried to make it fit. But, like, yeah, until you really do that inward seeking, it's so true. Like, it just, you feel, you can feel lost, which yeah. is perplexing because you don't freaking look lost. <laughs> but, you know, but, like, that's what really matters is that we yeah. take moments with ourselves to, like, how do I feel? Do I feel like I know what I'm doing or like I'm happy with what I'm doing? And it just sounds like once you got to that place where you were 
dissatisfied enough to change course mm -hmm. and do something different and find a therapist, talk to Julie, start hiring me as a coach, work with Dunbar, all that stuff. It sounds like that's when you really started to give voice to who you really are, what you really yeah. want, the life you actually want to live versus the societal projections that are, you know, put onto you. So just so you guys know, I don't want to glaze over this. I don't want to glaze over this. We're going to get to She Takes a Stage. But when <laughs> Cindy was doing our program, she created something really cool called Connect on Canvas. So why don't you just tell us a little bit about like, what is that? What does that mean to you? How does it help people? All that good stuff. Okay, so Connect on Canvas. Um, so, so I'll go back a few steps before that really was created. So growing up through my life, I've always liked to draw and paint and um, just kind of play with colors and markers. I would make people birthday cards and different things. So it was really fun. It was therapeutic. I could just kind of shut off my brain and sit. And it was just really therapy for me. So, um, you know, just like everybody else, you get busy in your life, you struggle with different things, paying your bills, um, whatever, relationships, where you live, all that kind of stuff. So I had kind of fallen off from doing any kind of art. And uh, so I was talking with a friend of mine and she's like, so I was trying to decide, I was very, you know, dissatisfied in the middle of trying to figure out what do I do to make a change? I got to do something different. So she's like, why don't you... Um, challenge yourself to do a painting or to do some kind of artistic art art painting on canvas for uh, every day for 30 days I'm like what I hadn't painted hardly any at all so she's like well just it doesn't have to be a huge painting but just do something every day for 30 days I'm like okay so I thought well you know I'll get at least a week in there but I'm I'm not sure I could do it for 30 days I didn't really believe I could so I every day I came home and I had a piece of canvas there, a piece of paper. It was a, and I just sat there and I thought, okay, well, what am I going to draw? So I didn't really like look at a vase and say, I'm going to draw a vase. I would, from the very beginning, I would just kind of close my eyes and just say, okay, I want to create something. What wants to be created on the paper? So then I would open my eyes and I would just pick a color and a brush and like maybe make circles, maybe make marks or whatever. Or I would want to paint something and paint a design. So I'll be darned. Every day for 30 days, I did it. And I completed it every day. And so the last day, it was a huge accomplishment. So that's how art kind of got created back for me. So it's creativity. It doesn't have to be painting or drawing. You know, it's just hooking into your own creativity. Mm -hmm. And that was really a goldmine for me. So as I progressed on, um, I just really feel that that's what's missing with a lot of us is that we don't we don't take the time because as a kid it's okay to draw and color and play with chalk and but as an adult you know, I'm not sure that's okay anymore you know it's it's too it's pretty childlike you know we're we're adults now we need to do things that are <laughs> adult like and so but I think if you if we really take the time to um, like go inward and connect with ourselves and connect with our creativity besides just being fun and time for yourself it really helps you connect in with a deeper part of yourself, I believe. Mm -hmm. So I, I just wanted to put something out there for me, but for other people called Connect on Campus. So it's where people can, you know, I like to try to help people share that experience and help them share how they can. They don't have to be artistic. You don't have to have all this painting degree. You don't even have to know how to paint, you know. Mm -hmm. You just get, put a brush and some color and start moving it across the page. That's it. That is really the start of connecting you with your creativity. Now, your creativity may be um, quilting or um, whatever. It could be all different things, you mm -hmm. know, cooking cupcakes or whatever. And so mm -hmm. it just helps you get in touch with, you know, that piece of you that's your creativity. And I think mm -hmm. from there, um, from there, it can really open up avenues in your life to get you connected to deeper things like finding your voice. And what do you what do you really want in your life? Are you dissatisfied in your current job or your marriage or a friendship? You know, mm -hmm. do you need to change something in your life? And I just think for me, that's really been a cool thing of getting that started. So, um, so that's why I created that. I love that so much because I feel like what I'm hearing as sort of the subtext <coughs> in what you're saying and what Connect on Campus is really about is that it's like, hey, I know we're adults, but let's open up a space in our lives that's just for play and fun. Like, no pressure. It's not about the bills. It's not about making something happen. It's not about getting to work on time. It's not about being a good friend or you know daughter or son or whatever 
this is actually just about like having a good freaking time for this moment, whatever comes out. So you can make an ugly ass painting. You right. can make a disgusting cupcake. Like it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Like almost like there's right. like, there's a freedom in that where it like takes the pressure off and there's like space to just be like, whatever happens in this next, you know, 30 minutes to an hour is right. totally cool. And I feel right. like that is therapeutic, you know, like a man, adults are like pressure cookers. There's so much happening. And it's like, you know, there's so much like pressure to perform, pressure to pay the bills, pressure to be somewhere on time, pressure to not let people down. There's so much pressure. I feel like you're opening up space to relieve some pressure and let the soul breathe. And yeah. my God, how powerful is that? That's awesome. Yeah. And there's so much judgment too out in the world or our families or our friends or whatever, either intentional or not, that like, you know, you create something and someone's going to say, might say, well, that's ridiculous. That's silly. You think that's a dog? You think, you know, or you might feel like I'm going to paint a green polka dot, you know, animal, a dog or horse, you know, and someone is going to come along and say, well, that's ridiculous. Are you kidding me? That's not the right color. And the legs are too short. And why is the hair funny? And, you know, so this time of creating and painting and drawing, there's no judgment. It's like a judgment free zone. You can paint because whatever you paint or put out there is what your soul wanted to create. Yeah. So for me to come along and say, well, that doesn't look right. I can't say that because it's what your soul wanted to create. So it's, it's the first time in some people's lives a judgment-free area where you can create something and do something, and it's totally fabulous, and yeah. it's totally exactly right. And that's, I think, a huge part of it. It's so cool. And then it makes yeah. perfect sense that you then moved <clears throat> on to, to not only create Connect on Canvas, and I've seen you do your own virtual classes with women, really supporting them and moving through like divorce and like super seriously hard things through painting and allowing space for whatever comes up and just being like a totally present awesome human being like this is why you're on the podcast because I just I love who you are like I love how you show up as a student and I love that it translates to being a teacher I think it's really cool that you're working with Dunbar because that really is in alignment with what you believe which is that you should use your creativity to connect to your soul you know so so tell us a little bit about your performing because that's so freaking cool all right, so let's see, where does that start? And I think, too, that has been in me and has wanted to come out of me like a big part of my life, like since I was a little kid. You know, like I always really wanted to uh, be up front or be on stage or I'd see actors or speakers or different people and go, man, that's what I want to do. You know, but of course I could never do that because I was, again, not really knowing who I was and pretty timid and, you know, bashful. Uh, <clears throat> what if somebody laughed at me? What if somebody made fun and said, you can't do that? What are you kidding me? So it's kind of been tucked away uh, my whole life. And that's one of the areas and the parts um, that I've given voice to and why I even did this. So, so I don't know, a couple years ago or after I first miss, met uh, Christina on her website, she has a program where she takes women and a small group of women and, and helps them create a piece of their story, their life story, and then the end result, so she helps you write it and there's and all of that, and, and then at the end is a 10 minute performance on a stage in LA, which is, oh my gosh, fabulous. <laughs> so cool. And so before, and I would read about this on her website and I thought, oh my gosh, I have to do this, I have to do this. I didn't tell anybody, of course, it was a big secret, you know, I'm not gonna tell anybody. So I would look at her things, and well then it came along for the, the signing up for this course. And it's kind of like my soul was screaming, yes, you know, before I did a verbal yes, inside me was, oh my gosh, this is it. This is what you need to really get yourself to step out of that, whatever fear or uh, modeling of what some life that somebody else said you should live. This is who you really are. This is what you really want to do in life. I'm like, yes, yes, it's really what I want to do. So, <clears throat> um, nervously i contacted christina and chatted with her and talked to her and you know of course i just love her and uh so just through talking and conversation and what do you really want and why did you even you know want to sign up for this and so uh it was just it was amazing the program it was over like six months and um yeah i thought well, what am i going to write about or what are you going to put out there i mean my whole life is so many years and how do you how do you know what you're going to put on stage and Will I just paint something? Will I sing a song? Will I stand there and talk? I don't know. So mm -hmm. through the six months um, and her nudging and she has great questions and journaling points and all this that you that you write a, a segment of your life. And uh, 
and then you put it on stage. It's 10 minutes, and um, it was just amazing. Just the writing part of it, if I never even put it on stage, was transforming, life transforming, uh, because I really gave voice to parts of me that were tucked away that no one, I hadn't even really had a voice um, to myself about them where I really like spoke about them, yeah. but I definitely had never even talked to anybody else about them. And I wrote them in a piece and I put them on stage and I talked to like a hundred people in this little theater. Ah. You were there, um, you know, and it was terrifying and exhilarating and fabulous and so freeing and so amazing. Yeah. You know, it was 10 minutes, but it was just tremendous that yeah. really, you know, to really like meet a goal or to do something fulfilling in your life that you've wanted to do your whole life yeah. and to really just do a little piece of it is just incredible. It is incredible. My God. <clears throat> and, uh, might I say, I was an, I was an audience member that day and this little, <laughs> little rebel mama bear was like just swelling with pride. Like you were just so good and like so bright and shiny and so honest and real and raw and like in your freedom and in your truth. And it just was like, wow like wow really I just felt so in awe of you and again that's why you're on this podcast like time and time again like even as the student you oftentimes are the teacher and I and I feel like just from a totally transparent perspective this podcast isn't gonna be like oh my god look at how many multiple six figures this person's make this person makes as a successful whatever like there will be those people. It will be great. You know, I'll have a great jam out session with them. And then it's really important to me to like have real stories of real people who are all on the rebellion together. You know, like this, this idea of stratification, like social stratification based on success or income or any of that shit. I don't buy into it and I don't like it. And I don't think it's even a real construct. I think it's just some like social construct that's kind of BS. And so it's exciting to me to be able to hear your story and like hear your nuggets of wisdom and put them on this platform and have it be about like the truth of like a real person who's experiencing, <clears throat> who's experiencing like the, the joys and the disappointments and the wonder of like this beautiful rebellion. You know, it's like, just fucking love it. I love your story. It's so good. So thank you. Totally. And then now you're on to do a one woman show, which will be longer. The She Takes a Stage was 10 minutes. And now your next one is how long? It'll probably be close to an hour, just less than 50 minutes, right around oh. 50 minutes. <laughs> Cindy, you have massive balls. That is so <laughs> monumental and amazing. Like, I'm very excited to see that. My goodness. So that's awesome. And then, you know, it's the same kind of thing where you are writing performing creating like connecting with your intuition speaking your truth it's not like you're an actress doing lines for a different part like nope she'll be cindy on the stage that yeah. will definitely be cindy uh. yeah and that kind of came about the same way she takes the stage like you know people that do a one-woman show like christina dunbar are actresses or people that do acting all the time or have been in some schooling or you know have that in their blood that kind of thing yeah. so she um christina put out her email you know anybody interested in creating a one-woman show so it kind of went through the first time and i saw it and i thought wow that'd be really cool but you know i'm not an actress and i can't really do that and you know what would i do with a one-woman show and you know i i don't i don't know anything about acting and and I, and a show and I couldn't do that. So it kind of went through and I went on my merry way and did my work and my life. And, and then it came through and it said, she sent an email and said, I have one spot left. And inside, I mean, like, you just went, Arr! and I read it and reread it and reread it. And I thought, oh, man, I really want to do this, but, but I, you know, it's so out of my comfort zone. Oh my gosh. And it's like, so not me. And you ask anyone, they'd say, oh no, that's, you know, don't, don't even bother. So I called her. I picked up the phone and called Christina and I said, you know, you got one spot left and I can't let it pass. You know, is this something I could do? Would I be a candidate for this? And she's like, oh my gosh, absolutely. You know, so we talked about it and it's not really what you would do with your show or how much money you're going to make from doing a show. It's, it's all about you and the transformation. And, um, it's what my soul really, really wants to do. So I signed up. We're six or seven months down the road. Um, today, actually I finished my draft of my sh of my show it's so it's so incredible it's like my baby i've birthed this creation um and it's just yes i'm not playing a character it's my life it's my story um i'm giving voice to more things mm -hmm. to parts of myself i've never shared 
which is just transforming in itself. And so now we're going into rehearsal phase. And in like three more months, I'm going to be on stage, just like I was before when she takes the stage performing one woman, my one woman show. And it's just incredible. It's so cool. It's so it's incredible. Cool. It's so exciting. Another thing, another like little pearl of wisdom I'm hearing from you is like hearing and answering your soul's desire or call, you know, like, yeah, yeah. it's not like you saw that like one spot left and you just like let it pass you by because a lot of us do that. A lot of us do that. We want something and we're like, that's a terrible idea, you know, like, but <laughs> there, there's some part of you that like is like, nah, like I need that. Like there's a, you feel it and you act on it. And I feel like that's that's also something that can really make a difference in whether someone is actually happy in their lives or not, you know, it's really yeah. simple. So yeah. that's just so exciting. I love that. And for any of you who are listening, I'm wondering, Cindy, do you have a website? I know you have a blog, like where can people find you if they want to kind of follow your journey? Um, I have a blog. It's kind of about, we didn't really talk too much about my time. I'm, I'm in the process of manifesting and uh, obtaining a tiny house hopefully soon we but have uh, to, to talk about that actually to live in and travel and so it's uh it's uh, cindy andrews dot uh, tumblr t u m b l r dot com is my blog mm -hmm. uh, would at anyone you know it'd be great to go there and just follow my journey of having a tiny house i have a facebook page just under my name cindy andrews and it's a connect on canvas page mm -hmm. and so would love to have anybody jump on there and you don't have to join or anything just an open page and put some of your artwork on there or ask me any questions or so i don't uh, have a website yet but that's coming hopefully at some point yeah but uh right now that would be the best way to connect or through shireen definitely contact shireen cool. and she can connect you with me so yeah like um, cindy's been part of rebel world for a while <laughs> and when we were doing our one-on-one -on -one coaching which is like the majority of this last year, uh, she educated me on something called Tiny House. So why don't you tell us what in the F that is, Cindy? So I am obsessed with tiny houses. A tiny house is a, a home of 300 feet, 300 square feet or less. Now the tiny house that I want to get is on wheels and it's built, constructed on a trailer. And they're, um, the one I want is like 20 feet long. It's about eight feet wide. But it's like two stories, like where you sleep is up on a loft. They have a loft on each end. You can have called dormers, which are where the sleeping area kind of pooches out and you have windows and you have enough space. You put like a queen size, king size bed up there. And then on the first floor area, is your, it's your home. It's a kitchen, it's a living area, it's a bathroom, shower, depending how you want to design it and create it and living space. And so I that's that's for me, I, I just, I don't know, I saw it on a TV show or tiny house and then I just started thinking about it and looking at it and I went to a workshop this past August and um, I just think it's a perfect solution for me I'm single I have a one dog and I, it's gonna be my retirement home mm -hmm. you know I'm gonna have a vehicle you have to have a three-quarter ton truck so I'm manifesting a vehicle as well <laughs> as a tiny house and um, I would just love to tour around the country. Mm -hmm. um, I may park it somewhere for a few months to for whatever reason or just travel in it and mm -hmm. uh, live in it and let people see it and tour it and i mean i just think it would be incredible and mm -hmm. and have my blog about it and so i've just been obsessed with it and i yeah. just feel it's a great answer for me and um you know now i'm as i work trying to uh uh you know get money and tuck it away for either a down payment either for a brand new one to have it built or to find one already built and uh look into that so i am just i love tiny houses it's i so think it's a great cool. answer i remember during our coaching session when you mentioned this and <clears> i was like cindy this is genius like i was like <laughs> just i had never heard of it i've been a geek rebel forever like i'm obsessed with like alternative lifestyles and freedom and like doing what works for you not doing the typical so i'm like she's a genius this is the white picket fence dream, but mobile. So she gets to do right. her, her traveling physical therapy where she makes more money traveling than if she like stayed in one place. She gets to speak and perform and do connect on canvas in all these different cities. It's going to be like her freaking book tour. Like I just started freaking out. I was like, I just can't believe right. what a genius idea this is for you. What a perfect fit it is for you for all of the different facets of the lifestyle that you want. And it's way more affordable than a regular, you know, sit on a plot of grass house, you know? So, right. gosh, I just, I love that so much. And these are the reasons that 
Cindy has risen to the cream of the crap of the rebels. You know, it's like she she got she's just gotten so into it. She's really like made moves. She's really like taken herself on. And then clearly, you can see that the lifestyle is being developed. Like we're always all still on our journey and our path. Like I'm not arrived. Trust me, I'm still well on my figuring out the rebel lifestyle. And I have done the work to look within, just like Cindy, you've done the work to look within. And therefore now you have clarity on like your path. You feel this obsession with a tiny house. It's not because you're obsessed with like the wood and brick that might make this house. It's because you know, this is going to give you the answer to your own rebel rule book. It's going to be the thing that like answers your soul's desire for freedom and travel and excitement and adventure and connect on canvas and performing and speaking to everything that you love. And it's just so exciting. Just and I feel like there's so many people listening right now who have the things that they want or love, or maybe they're still figuring it out. But it's like I think I feel like just hearing your story and seeing how it's all transpired and developed on its own. You know, you just putting one foot in front of the other, you just listening inward a little bit, you just like seeking out a little support, you answering those soul call moments where you're like, I need this. Like that's what this is all about. Like yeah. that's what leads yeah. you to deep, deep soul fulfillment. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah, I just have that passion to, uh, like you say, to just move it forward. Like if I think a tiny house, and some people might think and go, oh, yeah, that'd be nice. I'd love to live in a tiny house, but I can't do that. But I think and go, I'd love to live in a tiny house. And then I'm like, okay, so how can I make it happen? Yes. So I get online, and I look up, and I go to a workshop. And, you know, first I thought I could build one. Well, I just don't have the tools or the knowledge and all that. But I'm like... I, I'm gonna, I, you know, I'm gonna figure out a way to get it. Yeah, you know, exactly. I don't want the typical job where I sign up and I'm working at the same place for a year. I just feel, you know, blocked in and trapped. Okay, I'll be a physical therapist, but I'll be a traveler. Oh my gosh, there's, and so I just think there's always a way. That's yeah. just kind of my motto. I just feel, mm. no matter what your situation, if you're unhappy, you're stuck anywhere, whatever that means to you. I just think there's always a way. There's always a way to do it differently. A way to get out. I mean, I just, I just do talking. You know, being involved with you guys and all you empowered women that I've have come into my life. Mm-hmm. You know, show me possibility and excitement. And it's like, well, why, why do you think you can't have that? It's mm-hmm. like. Uh, I don't know. I can't have that. And you're like, of course. You know, you just have to find a way. That's yeah, all. You know, so, so that's just my life of, of always finding a way. And usually it's not the typical, mm-hmm. you know, traditional way, which is okay with me. Because I tried that for so many years and I just was really bored with that and unfulfilled. Yeah. So the uh, I'm trying the other way. So I'm just, it's it's a great way to live. And so it's, good. it's very exciting. Yep. Yeah. I love it, girlfriend. All right, so will you, for all the people listening who are in the, like, I don't know, like, in the world of Awaken the Rebel, but, like, have never taken the plunge of coaching. Now, granted, Cindy coached directly with me, and I'm not quite sure that's an option at this point. If people hire a coach through Awaken the Rebel, it will now probably be our head coach, Kim, instead of me. But, um... The philosophy and the practical application will still be the same. Like, people are basically going to probably get what you got out of it. So, for the people listening, would you tell them, like, what do you feel you've gleaned from working with an Awaken the Rebel coach? Let's see. Um, I think coaching is is tremendous. Okay, for me, it... it, um, for me, like I said, I'm I'm single, so I don't have anybody in, at home to talk to or to throw my ideas at or to, like, bounce back and say, okay, yeah, this would be good. So for me, it was an outlet of somebody that uh, knows me, loves me, cares about me, uh, that was willing to, um, you know, talk. L- let me talk to them. And so they're like, so what's going on? And so I would just share an ex- everything of what the issue was with the problem or frustration or, or I don't know what to do about this or, mm-hmm. you know, I don't have enough money or I need a different job. And they'd say, okay, so let's look at this, you know? And so it's somebody that, um, will listen to you and provide like options. They don't tell you what to do. They don't say, okay, here's what you should do with your life. Um, they give you some options and help you like think outside of the box. Yeah. And then especially someone like from the rebel group, it's not the typical, okay, you need to go get another nine to five job and, you know, pay your bills and then you'll be happy. No, no. And, you know, it's coming from a whole different angle of it's not the typical, it's, it's the rebel mindset, the rebel. Well, have you thought about this? You know, now you may mention to somebody, well, have you thought about a tiny house? Have you thought of being a traveler? Because we've talked, you know, Mm -hmm. but you have options and things that I may not think about or in my stuck moment. Mm -hmm. Um, And you you get me and, you know, I was 
have hung up many times and been um, encouraged and excited and got back on Google and, oh my gosh, and that's a great idea. I want to investigate that. And so really helps me um, either in the moment get unstuck or in the long term get unstuck by some other options and some other uh, ways to look at things. So I just, it's invaluable and I love, I think everyone should do coaching, you know, because it gives you someone else to talk about or to talk about someone else to talk to about mm -hmm. your life mm -hmm. that can help you look at options. Just look at things differently. Just turn yeah. it another little few degrees and look at your own situation differently. Yeah. I think it's fabulous. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like almost, almost like you have like a life, <clears throat> a life strategizing partner, like someone who's like on board yeah. with you to create strategies that may be outside of the box, inside the box, who freaking knows, but someone who's on board with you going like, all right, this is the life you want. This is what we need to solve. Let's both put our heads together and make it happen. That's right. I like that. Right. Exactly. Like that. Yep. Yep. Totally cool. And today, before we started recording, we did that. We talked about this really cool investment that Shireen is geeking out on currently that might create some funds for this tiny house. So we shall see. Keep us posted in your blog, girlfriend. Will Let do. us know how that all shakes out. And then, okay, so remind us again, your website and your Facebook URL so we can go there and check you out. <clears throat> I don't have a, I don't have a, fa a website yet, I'm but sorry, my, blog. my blog right. is, uh, my name, C I N D Y A N D R E W S Cindy Andrews dot Tumblr T U M B L R dot com. Okay, sweet. And then Cindy Andrews dot Tumblr dot com. And then um, on Facebook, just look up, pull up my name, and then connect on Canvas. Sweet. Uh, yeah, so you can definitely connect there or through Shireen. That's right. I am the gatekeeper, bitches. She's. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So, um, parting words for our people listening. Do you have any last nugget of Cindy you want to give for people who are on their journey making it happen? Oh, um... Take time to connect to your creativity, whatever that is. It's invaluable. It's so important. And there's always a way. There's always a way. There's always someone to talk to. There's always a different way to do things. You're never without hope. You're never without a plan. You know, you just need to figure out what that is for yourself. So I think that's, uh, I mean, just, you know, it, just, it gives, you, gives you that hope. You know, you're never totally stuck where you, you don't have any options. I love that so much. Thank you, Cindy. You remind me of Welcome. this quote, looking inward and then just like, there's always a way. Like, there's this quote where this guy basically has says, who looks outside dreams and who looks inside awakens, which is very mm -hmm. much like the purpose of Awaken the Rebel, like look inward and see what your path is. And I feel like you've just been a really awesome example of someone who's done that. A really awesome example of someone who has successfully done that and is on your path and well into creating the lifestyle that you have imagined it's so freaking awesome and encouraging so thank you for being who you are cindy thank you for being here today and sharing oh so good and you know we'll just keep rebelling together my dear absolutely my <laughs> pleasure it was it was a, a thrill for me to be here and share with your listeners and with you um it's always uh always great to be in your energy and uh <laughs> my pleasure anytime all right, maybe we will do it again. After you purchase cool. your tiny house, we'll have to have you on again as a celebration podcast. <laughs> there we go. All right, cool. For all those of you listening, thank you for being here. Check us out at awakenrebel.com, and we will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.